Hi, I'm Audrey Desjardins from University of Washington, and I am delighted to present this work on behalf of my co-authors, Jenna McWither, Justin Patelka, Chandler Simon, Yuna Shin, Ruby Pevin, and Philbert Wijaja. While there are a multitude of home Internet of Things devices and an even broader range of homes they exist in, the interfaces created for home dwellers to engage their own data remain restricted to a narrow set of techno-solutionist and capitalist pressures. Home data are often presented and understood by home dwellers as a protective safety net, as a compromise for receiving the services provided by IoT companies, as a tool for self-knowledge, or as a mechanism to save money or energy. Spreadsheets, apps, dashboards, and smart recommendations associated with IoT systems are typically grounded in an objective view of data, which ignores the deeply local, interpretive, and dynamic nature of data, qualities often more attuned to the characteristics of home environment. The challenge is that these goals and orientation of data, while perhaps desirable as their own, create a closed set of design possibilities and foreclose exploration of other possible encounters with data that may be less about productivity or objectivity. The odd interpreters were designed in response to re recent calls with em within empirical and critical research that call for diversifying data encounters in everyday settings. Looking for alternatives means looking for ways to bring data back together with the material conditions of its production and the social context of its interpretation. This works this work builds on important works in HCI, design and science and technology studies. In particular, we are inspired by work in, di in discursive and speculative IoT in home environments, data materializations in home settings, and data infrastructures, labors, and subjectivities. Our methodological commitments is to research through design. Our intention is to reveal our process and what we learned about working with home IoT data and our efforts to move away from conventional data encounters centered on, on objectivity and productivity. We also build on Ujas and Wakari's idea of design events as a scaffold for our analysis, as design events focus on particular moments within a project without strict orientation towards the final designs. By purposefully exposing the messy side of our design process, our goal is to illustrate the complexities of working with data as a material. We interweave stories of iterating making, of iterative making, with moments of living with, proto with the prototypes in our homes while we were refining them, further foregrounding our actual research through design process. This builds on autobiographical design processes, as well as Odom's description of the designer researcher. Within our team of seven design researchers, five of us lived with one or two odd interpreters over the course of several months. In this video talk, I'll introduce the three odd interpreters. In the paper, we present six design events that surround the making and living of the odd interpreters. First, let's look at broadcast. Broadcast uses sound to expose, expose material data infrastructure. Broadcast is a device that tunes into the network traffic related to a smart speaker, such as a Google Home or an Amazon Echo Dot, and represents the traffic into imaginative sounds that an occupant can hear once a day. Smart speaker data, including utterances in audio as well as transcribed format, are often imagined as part of a recorded archive somewhere in a distant data center. By design, broadcast moves away from this type of encounter and instead fostered a more immediate connection to a broader infrastructure surrounding voice assistants and their data. Alexa, this is how it works. Play some jazz. Here's a station you might like. Ultimate Jazz, free on Amazon Music. So as data is coming in and out of the home, this light on top turns on, a noise sound comes on. 
and you can come in and tune in to a sound. We chose to use imaginative, imaginative sounds as an analogy to represent a liveliness of data as they travel to and from the device. We collaborated with a sound designer to generate sounds that are recognizable yet odd with the intention to keep a level of curiosity and otherness. So these um, are some of the sounds that we worked with. <sighs> While broadcast draws attention to smart devices' relationship to broader data infrastructures, soft fading reinterprets what data capture might mean in the context of the home. Soft fading, in brief, presents an analog capture to emphasize data's locality. Soft fading is a device that collects sunlight in a home over long periods of time. The sunlight is recorded as faded sections on a piece of fabric. Data collection in the context of home IoT is often regarded as objective, precise, and instant. In contrast, soft fading turns this convention on its head and instead offers an analog, local, and layered experience by embracing blurred edges and imprecision, both in data collection and interpretation. The cylinder turns one full rotation once each day, capturing daily, but also seasonal patterns of sunlight. So here on the left, you can see a winter in Seattle, and on the right, a summer in Seattle. While data bakery, uh, with data bakery, we aimed at creating space for the occupant to engage their own labor in the interpretation process of IoT data. Data Bakery engages human performance and labor in data meaning making. Data Bakery is a system that provides a cookie recipe based on a smart plug data in a home or multiple smart plug data in a home. Data are often perceived as passive in the background and are kept just in case they are needed. With this artifact, we bring data to the forefront and create a performative way of encountering one's home data by baking them into cookies. The act of reading the recipe, measuring precisely the ingredients, deciding whether or not to alter the recipe, and eating the cookies are meant to offer experientially tactile and gustatory ways to reflect on data. In the paper, we do not focus on the full process of designing or making the odd interpreters. Instead, we highlight six design events, which allows us to stay with the ongoing and dynamic nature of the design process and design research. This focus on the through part of research through design is relevant to demystify both the conceptual, but also the material and infrastructural complexities of designing data encounters that go beyond a techno-solutionist framing. We invite you to look at the paper to understand how data interpretation might be anticipatory or how aiming for softer edges might require more precision or how the material realities of Wi-Fi might contrast with imaginative and expansive qualities of data or finally how many layers of labor might be embedded in creating cookie recipes from data. In conclusion, we are still only at the beginning of these types of entangled lives between humans, IoT data, and home. And we contend that imaginative and experiential ways of being with data is a powerful starting point to challenge common assumptions or conventions about IoT home data. Together, the odd interpreters render experiential some timely critiques and concerns around IoT 
such as infrastructure invisibility, assumed objectivity, and hidden human labor. The question here is not what can data tell us about ourselves or our homes, as a data visualization or materialization might offer, but instead what tools or tactics do we need to know data better? We see this knowability of data as a crucial step towards other important goals such as data literacy and agency around issues of privacy and ownership. We extend many thanks to, the mem to members of Studio Tilt who helped in the design and making of the odd interpreters as well as collaborators and our funders. We would love to hear from you. Please get in touch and thank you for listening.